Hi everyone, Brybone here, back with another one. Today, we're going to take a look at a pretty hot off the press AMZ bypass. Now, just a level set. I know I have many, you know, newer red teamers and purple teamers that watch my channel. AMZ is the anti-malware scan interface. And what it does is it allows scripting languages, in particular things like PowerShell, to run through EDR before they are run, right? It allows the system to detect threats happening live in scripting languages. That's why PowerShell over the past few years has become uh, almost dead from an attacker perspective because of the, um, the ability to detect things happening as scripts are run. Now, occasionally, you'll run across a pretty cool AMSI bypass, and this is one of them. This is Nuke AMSI by Abhishek Sharma. Currently works. Uh, it does patch AMSI live in memory. That's how basically it functions. It, it patches AMSI live in memory. So once it's patched, it no longer functions. But let's take a look at that. We're going to first look at how it's run, and then I'll show you how to detect it on the same side. So if we take a look at Windows Host 2, you can see I have Nuke AMSI here in my updog on my Kali box. I've downloaded the Git uh, repo just to make sure that in case the repo goes away, I still have the code and in case I want to play with it. But we have Nuke AMSI here, and that's what we're going to be using. Now I have a PowerShell command line open here. I'll just exit it and go back in just to make sure that all of the variables are clear. I'll rerun it. We know that it is now completely clean. So if I do something as simple as invoke Mimikatz, it's going to tell me that EDR has blocked this function. Now, speaking of EDR, if we come over here and we look at Defender and we go to Virus and Threat Protection, we go into our options, we can see real-time protection, cloud delivered protection, automatic sample submission, and temper protection are all turned on. So Defender is on fully. So what does that mean? We're basically going to bypass Defender and AMZ with this utility. So if I run Invoke Mimikatz, there's no Mimikatz on the system yet. If I run Invoke Mimikatz, it's immediately going to tell me this script contains malicious content and has been blocked by your antivirus software. This is a keyword. Defender just looks for this keyword and blocks it. Well, if AMSI is bypassed, this message will change. So let's clear. And then we're going to bypass AMSI with our Nuke AMSI script. So right here you can see I'm just doing a simple download cradle and there's my Nuke AMSI PS1. I'll run that and you can see we now get the banner developed by Abhishek Sharma on the date. And if we press enter, it has now tried to patch AMSI live and looks like it was successful. So if I clear now and I run invoke Mimikatz, I'm going to get a different error. I now get the term invoke Mimikatz is not recognized as the name of a commandlet. This is typically a good way to test if AMSI has been bypassed. Now, I haven't run anything yet, but let's run something. Let's go get Mimikatz from Nishang. Give me just one second here. I want to copy this in because it's fairly long and I don't want to mistype it. And here we go. Here is the actual invoke Mimi Cats from Nishang, the one that Defender is trying to protect you against. And it'll take a minute to download here because, well, we're downloading an entire binary. And let's see if Defender does anything. It doesn't look like it did anything there. So let's go invoke Mimi Cats. And let's see if it runs. It may take a minute to run here. And there we go. We have running Mimikatz. Now, I would probably recommend you use something else because Mimikatz is pretty well fingerprinted out there and you probably have the uh, a better chance of not being detected running something like Safety Cats or, or something else. I just ran this straight to prove that I could. But we have fully bypassed AMSI. So there's your bypass. Now detecting this. This is actually a pretty easy detection. Because it's running in PowerShell, there are typically two logs that will be present here. It's 4104 and either 400, 600, or 800. In this case, detecting this one, you're going to be looking for 800 and 4103 and 4104. So if we come over here to our Elastic Sim 
I'll just rerun this query. It's event code 800 4103 or 4104 and virtual protect EX or nuke AMZ. These are the terms that are present in this script. Now, if we take a look at the 4104 log here, we can clearly see a lot of nuke AMZ, right? Nuke AMZ is the class ID, right? So what you want to do, that's a pretty easy thing to rename is Nuke AMZ, right? I could rename Nuke AMZ throughout this and break your detection. But it would be harder for them to change the API call that they're calling, which is Virtual Protect EX. So you can see right here, they're calling Virtual Protect EX. So, and they're doing it down here as well. So you want to make sure that you're detecting, number one, basically anything in PowerShell calling Virtual Protect EX. That's not a common function. But number two, just to make sure your, protect, your uh, detection isn't brittle, I would detect both of these. If you look at the script, you see a lot of nuke AMZ throughout. But looking for virtual protect EX, since you know they're calling that, that is a very telltale sign. Now, if we look at the 800 series event, you can see we have the nuke AMZ class, and we still have the virtual protect EX right here. So if you don't have the PowerShell operational logs, you can still detect the usage of this in the 800 series event. So there you go. This is a quick one this week, but I thought this one was pretty cool and it has made a difference in my workflow, so I thought I would share. Uh, once again, hack the planet to defend better.